one there. Just finishing off my rainbow to put in my window to say thank you to all the key workers. So I'm going to put my crayons away. It's really important that we look after our things and take care to look after things that we have. Do you know, sometimes we can hurt people's feelings by not being careful about the things that we do. And I've got a story all about it. And I'd like to share it with you now. It's called The Day the Crayons Quit by Oliver Jeffries. Now one day in class, Duncan went out to take his crayons and found a stack of letters with his name on in his bag. The first one he opened said, Hey Duncan, it's me, Red Crayon. We need to talk. You make me work harder than any of your other crayons. All year long, I wear myself out colouring fire engines, apples, strawberries and everything else that's red. I even work on holidays. I have to colour all the Santas at Christmas and all the hearts on Valentine's Day. I need a rest. Your overworked friend, Red Crayon. Mm, he sounds very tired, doesn't he? The next one said, Dear Duncan, all right, listen. I love that I'm your favourite crayon for grapes, dragons and wizard's hats, but it makes me crazy that so much of my gorgeous colour goes outside of the lines. If you don't start colouring inside the lines soon, I'm going to completely lose it. Your very neat friend, Purple Crayon. Hmm. Purple Crayon is sounding frustrated. Dear Duncan, I'm tired of being called light brown or dark tan because I am neither. I am beige and I am proud. I am also tired of being second place to Mr. Brown Crayon. It's not fair that Brown gets all the bears, the ponies, the puppies, while the only things I get are turkey dinners, if I'm lucky, and wheat. And let's be honest, when was the last time you saw a kid excited about colouring wheat? Your beige friend, beige crayon. Oh, beige sounds very disappointed, doesn't he? Duncan, grey crayon here, you're killing me. Now I know you love elephants and I know that elephants are grey, but that's a lot of space to colour in all by myself. And don't even get me started on your rhinos, hippos and humpback whales. Do you know how tired I am after handling one of those things? Such big animals. Now, baby penguins are grey, you know, and so are very tiny rocks, pebbles. How about one of those once in a while to give me a break? Your very tired friend, grey crayon. Well, poor grey sounds exhausted. So that's not just tired, that's really, really tired. Dear Duncan, you colour with me, but why? Most of the time I'm the same colour as the page you are using me on, white. If I didn't have a black outline, you wouldn't even know I was there. I'm not even in the rainbow, I'm only used to colour snow or to fill in empty space between other things. And it leaves me feeling, well, empty. We need to talk. Your empty friend, 
white crayon. And there's a picture Duncan has drawn with white of a white cat in the snow. You can't really see much of the white, can you? Oh dear, I think white is feeling invisible. Hi Duncan, I hate being used to draw the outline of things. Things that are coloured in by other colours, all of which think they're brighter than me. It's not fair when you use me to draw a nice beach ball and then fill in all the colours of the ball with all the other crayons. How about a black beach ball sometime? Is that too much to ask? Your friend, black crayon. I think black is feeling very disappointed and sad. Dear Duncan, as green crayon, I am writing for two reasons. One is to say that I like my work, loads of crocodiles, trees, dinosaurs and frogs. I have no problems and I wish to congratulate you on a very successful colour in things green. Um, correct so far. The second reason I write is for my friends, yellow crayon and orange crayon, who are no longer speaking to each other. Both crayons feel that they should be the colour of the sun. Now please settle this soon because they're driving the rest of us crazy. Your happy friend, Green Crayon. Well, I think the first one of the crayons is feeling happy. And I think he's also feeling helpful because I think he wants to help his friends, orange and yellow crayons. Dear Duncan, yellow crayon here. I need you to tell orange crayon that I am the colour of the sun. I would tell him, but we are no longer speaking. And I can prove I'm the colour of the sun too. Last Tuesday, you used me to colour in the sun in your happy farm colouring book. In case you've forgotten, it's on page seven. You can't miss me. I'm shining down brilliantly on a field of yellow corn. Your pal and the true colour of the sun, yellow crayon. Mm. I think yellow is feeling confident. Dear Duncan, I see yellow crayon already talk to you, the big whiner. Anyway, could you please tell him that tattletale that he is not the colour of the sun? I would, but we are no longer speaking. We both know I am clearly the colour of the sun because on Thursday you used me to colour the sun on both the Monkey Island and Meet the Zookeeper pages in your Day at the Zoo colouring book. Orange, you glad I'm here? Ha <laughs> ha! Your pal, and the real colour of the sun, Orange Crayon. I think Orange is feeling confident and I think he's feeling funny too because he made that joke. Orange, you glad I'm here? Dear Duncan, it has been great being your favourite colour this past year and the year before and the year before that. I have really enjoyed all those oceans, lakes, rivers, raindrops, rain clouds and clear blue skies. But the bad news is that I am so short and stubby, I can't even see over the railing in the crayon box anymore. I need a break. Your very stubby friend, Blue Crayon. I think Blue Crayon is feeling worried that he's going to be used up completely. Duncan. Okay, listen here, kid. You have not used me once in the past year. It's because you think I'm a girl's colour, isn't it? Speaking of which, please tell your little sister I said thank you for using me to colour in her pretty princess colouring book. I think she did a fabulous job of staying inside the lines. Now back to us. Could you please use me sometime to colour the occasional pink dinosaur or monster or cowboy? Goodness knows they could all use a splash of colour. Your unused friend, Pink Crayon. I think pink is feeling a bit sad, a bit overlooked maybe. 
Hey Duncan, it's me, Peach Crayon. Why did you peel off my paper wrapper? Now I'm naked and I'm too embarrassed to come out of the box. I don't even have any underwear. How would you like to go to school naked? I need some clothes. Help your naked friend, Peach Crayon. Peach is feeling very upset. Well, poor Duncan hadn't thought about any of those things. He just wanted to colour. And of course, he wanted his crayons all to be happy. And that gave him an idea. And if I can just turn the page, I'll tell you what it was. When Duncan showed his teacher his new picture, she gave him a good work sticker for colouring. And if you look carefully, there's not too much road or water. You've got a hippo that's blue, a cowboy that's pink, a whale's orange, a plane that's pink. Um, you've got a nice beigey brown um, bear and a puppy and a pink dinosaur and a black rainbow and a yellow sky and an orange sun. And I think everyone is feeling happy on there. I think everyone looks splendid. And there's even a little white cat that can be clearly seen because she's on a green sea. I think he's put a lot of thought into that picture and which colors he was going to use. And he also was given a gold star for creativity because he also made a rainbow crayon that could colour in all the colours. So I think we need to be careful about how we do things, how we look after things and how we treat other people because the way we treat other people will make people feel different ways and we like everyone to feel happy, don't we? So remember, when you're at home, you're never too old for a good book. There is no app to replace your lap. So curl up together with a good book and share stories and read. Until next time, this is Mrs Morris saying goodbye.